Okay, let's talk about the FTCE general knowledge test. So this has been a big deal over the last uh, few years in Florida because it's a uh, test that goes above and beyond uh, certification. So the state of Florida, you have to um, get your certification, uh, pass your certification exam in your particular field, and you also have to pass the FTCE uh, general knowledge test. So uh, it's just been pretty um, tough for, for some teachers out there because let's say you're focused in one particular area, let's say like Spanish or, or something like that, you teach that, you're great at it, but you are not up to speed on the other um, things that are going to be on this FTCE test, which is not going to be your Spanish certification test, it's going to be like math, reading, etc. So we all have our strengths and weaknesses and I, for myself, I'm a math teacher, I can certainly uh, appreciate, you know, studying subjects that you've been away from a long time and are, are not in your kind of direct profession. But with that being said, the reality of it is that you still have to pass this exam. Now, so many teachers, uh, a lot of people, you know, it's a big deal in a state struggle with this uh, exam, particularly with the math portion of it, um, because quite frankly, when you cut right down to it, you know, you're they're, you're not spending enough time learning math. I mean, it's as simple as that. You know, unfortunately, if this is a requirement and you're going to teach in Florida, you really got to buckle down and put in the work. Um, you know, in a perfect world, you know, obviously you wouldn't have to do that. Uh, maybe in other states you don't have to do that, certainly. But in Florida, you got to get to this test. And I like to kind of say, you know, let's look at the brighter side of things. You're just going to be a better, well-rounded person. So certainly in the spirit of the test, um, you know, hey, we want general knowledge is the whole idea. Then you know what? Let's learn some general knowledge. So before we get started, I know I kind of said some commentary here on the FTC, but I wanted to talk to it because um, a lot of people are using things out there like uh quick fix systems, hey, learn, you know, study programs and whatnot uh, to try to get to this test and they're not making it. A lot of people are failing because the bottom line is there's really no shortcut to learn math. Now, if you like my teaching style, again, I teach middle school math, high school math, and I, I do a lot in, in, in mathematics and have a great track record. I actually have an FTCE general knowledge test math prep course. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to check out um, my uh, videos on that but it's an extremely comprehensive course and you want to learn from someone who you understand you know understand their instruction that's the best way to get ready for the FTCE math portion okay of that uh, that subtest is to just start learning math the right way you know if you try to do a quick review or try to like I don't have time then you're just setting yourself up for a high probability of not making it through on a particular, you know, uh, say, let's say the math exam, where probably most people struggle with. And um, and then, you know, you end up having to take the test again, et cetera, et cetera. So all that being said, here's a basic, nice little math problem that uh, you, you know, definitely want to be able to handle on the FTCE. And it's just a one example problem or uh, that's going to test a particular, um, concept that for sure you want to know about. So anyways, here's a basic problem. There's a couple different ways to approach it. So we have a car, it's going 20 miles per hour. So how far will this car go in six hours? So if you want to pause the video quickly and go ahead and see if you can figure it out. All right, so hopefully um, you all came up with your answer. And let's take a look at how we can approach this, okay? now. This is a perfect, nice little illustration of a concept that you're for sure going to want to be really good at uh, for the FTCE general knowledge test, and that's ratios. Okay, ratios, rates, and proportions. Okay, so what I want to do is just teach you very, very basics of this. Actually, I want to be able to teach everything about it, but enough for you to kind of get a sense of how to approach this. Now, even if you get the right if you got the right answer, I could have made this um, problem a little more complicated. So instead of guessing, it might have tripped you up. But let's take a look at how we use proportions to solve this problem. Now, let's talk about a the speed of this car. Okay, This is technically we would call the rate of the car 
a rate is an actually a fraction. So we look at 20 miles per hour. We want to think of it this way, 20 miles. Now, here's where the important part comes in, per one hour, okay? This is a rate. A rate is simply a fraction where the units of measure are different. A ratio is a fraction where the units of measure are basically the same. Okay, they're counting the same concept. Here we have miles, which is distance, and we're comparing it to time. Ratios compare the same concept. Okay, but that's for a complete full lesson. All right, so this is 20 miles per hour, and what we're going to do is build a proportion, and a proportion is two equal fractions. Now let's notice here, we have miles in the numerator, right? So actually, let's go back to this real quick. So this is 20 miles per one hour, 20 miles per one hour, and we don't write it that way. What we do, we write 20 miles per hour, mph, okay? But this is technically what it means mathematically, okay? All right, so now how far is this car going to go in six hours? So we want to know how many miles, how many miles, right? That's the question mark. So, and it's the unknown value. So in algebra, an unknown value, we just uh, represent that with a variable. So let's use a simple variable x. Now, I don't know how far this is going to go in six hours, but when you set up a, purport, a proportion, what we want to do is have the same units here in this fraction over to the right. Okay, so here I have miles in the numerator and hours in the denominator. Okay, so I'm going to put miles, and then this down here will be hours. Okay. Uh, let's make this hours, okay? So 20 miles per one hour is is the same as how many miles in six hours, okay? So you see this is, the, is this is a proportion. I have an equal fraction. This fraction is equal to this fraction. Let's take a look at a simpler example of a, of a proportion. Let's use the fraction one half, okay? Now real quick, tell me another fraction that is equivalent to one half that's not actually one over two. There's any number, let's say five over 10, right? It could be three over six, it could be 50 over 100, 40 over 80. That's irrelevant, okay? This fraction is equivalent to this fraction. So by definition, this is what we call a proportion. Now to solve a proportion, all we do is multiply a cross, okay? Well. We, this is a property of, of proportions, but it's also the way we solve proportions. So when you have two equal fractions, this, when we multiply across in this manner, this is called the cross product. Cross product, and let's see why this is extremely important. So we have one times 10, let's write that here, one times 10, is that equal to two times five? It certainly is, right? So one times 10 is 10, and 10 is equal to 10. Okay, so this property, here with a proportion, one fraction equivalent to another fraction, it's called the cross product, is how we solve proportion problems, okay? So let's keep this in mind and let's move on to our problem here. Okay, so we have 20 miles, this car goes 20 miles per one hour, we want to know how many miles per six hours will it go. Okay, now notice again, the miles are in the numerator spot and the hours are in basically in the denominator spot. In other words, they're in the same position. So now we could just use the cross product. Let's use a different color here. And we're going to cross, we're going to multiply this way and we're going to multiply this way. So now we have, at, when we do this part of it now, we can really just kind of simplify this 20. In other words, drop the units just for a moment when we do these calculations. All right, because we know we're looking for x miles. So 6 times 20 is 120, and 1 times x is just x. So x is what we're looking for, and that's 120 miles. Now, most of you, I suspect, figured this out. You're like, oh yeah, this car, just 6 times that, and it'll be 120. I got you, right? And I know that you probably got that uh, um, question correct in that manner. And that's okay, okay? However, I could have certainly put a couple twists into this problem. Um, 
where it wouldn't have been so easy or obvious to figure it out. Okay, I don't want to get into it now, but believe me, you know, I, as a uh, teacher, I've been doing this for a long, long, long time. This is kind of a basic, nice, basic problem. But the reason why I selected it for this example is to teach you something um, that you, uh, you know, really huge importance for this FTC general knowledge test, which is rates, ratios, and proportions. Remember, this this test here. Uh, you're going to have to be really strong with, say, like your Algebra 1 level concepts, uh, geometry, and some basically uh, basic probability and statistics, okay? You don't have to be, like, totally know this subject or totally know everything in geometry or do advanced, uh, super advanced algebra, but you, you definitely have to be pretty well-rounded um, at these areas to have that confidence that you're going to go into the FTC general knowledge test and and handle these these problems so you don't have to stress taking this test you know uh, again or, or you know you get through it and then you move on with your life anyways let's go ahead and wrap this up so again if you're interested in uh, my FTC general knowledge math prep course I'll leave the link in the description below you can check that out also, I literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel. I'm posting all the time. I love teaching math. It's my passion. I do a lot for um, uh, a lot of courses for a variety of folks. I take my courses for graduate school to high school equivalency to teacher certification. So I do help a lot of uh, folks in, uh, in a variety of categories, but I just like to just teach math and throw things out there on YouTube to help people out. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing. Hey, if you like the video, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me uh, some comments, um, your feedback. Let's me know how you're doing. Plus, you know, uh, uh, will better help me, you know, make future videos. I, you know, I know this has been a big frustration, this, this exam, for a lot of folks. Some people get through it, no problem. Other folks, you know, really have to work at it. I want to help, okay? But with that being said, you know, as a fellow teacher, you know, um, you know, I wish you all the best in your career. Don't give up. It's a rewarding career to be a teacher for sure. And uh, thank you for your time and have a great day.